This is... wait, is this channel receiving me? Uh, driver of 14FC, this is Control. We read you. Is that you, Carmine? No, my name is Rania. Oh, you're the new kid. I'm the new driver, yeah. Who is Carmine? He was driver 14FB. What happened to him? He, he retired last month. Good for him. Not really. He was in the big Sector 6 crash last week. Lots of people got retired. If you don't want to wait for Cyberpunk 2077, then check out Cloudpunk. This game is an ideal gap filler to bridge the time until the release of Cyberpunk 2077, but the game can also stand wonderfully alone. There are several reasons for this and each speaks for Cloudpunk. Let's start with the most obvious one, Nivalis. Nivalis is all you can see in the game. Nivalis is an unbelievable big city as it can probably only exist in stories. It depends a little bit on what the first thing you see in Nivalis is. But with a little bit of bad luck, this game can seem a little bit poor on detail. It's a bit of the pixel look, but if that was the first impression, you're completely wrong. Uh, one more thing, 14FC. Welcome to Cloudpunk. Because one of the best arguments for Cloudpunk is the game world. It's unexpectedly large and incredibly detailed in many corners. Nivalis has a lot to offer, there's so much to see. If you can get lost in cyberpunk cities like I did, it's worth just flying around the city and admiring what you see. But you don't just fly. The city is built vertically and is divided into several sectors. Between them you travel back and forth over the car lifts or up and down. In the single sectors there are many parking places for landing and you can then explore the single roofs or places on foot. Depending on how you play, you can thus spend half of the playing time on two legs. At least that was the case with me, but I think I'm a special type of player in this respect. I just like to explore fascinating game worlds. When running, the view of the player or the city is almost always from the side, like a classic side-scroller. If you turn 90 degrees, the camera turns with you. The view from behind is rare. However, it can happen that the pan of the camera sometimes causes confusion when the view changes abruptly and turns so that you don't know in which direction you wanted to go at first. This is always a short disturbance, but it happens relatively seldom. But this view also has its meaning. In many places the view is turned in such a way that one has a perfect view to, for example, a fantastic skyline. One of the arguments for Cloudpunk is just this city and the developers wanted to fully exploit this strength. Whereby the game also has a weakness in this point. Often elements pop up just like that. Most of the time it's a tower in the distance, but sometimes it's a texture when you're relatively close to it. That can be disturbing, but in my eyes it's only a small point. By exploring it, I also came to more hours than the average. I read in several places that it would take about 10 hours. I came up with 14 hours, but that was mainly due to a side quest whose task I would consider work in any other game. In the course of the game you meet Evelyn. You should find out the story about her by yourself, but you should collect punch cards for her which are distributed in the whole city. Even if it doesn't sound like much in the beginning, it will be a lot. First it's called collect 20 cards. You hand them in, then it's collect 20 cards again. By the end it's 80 in total. I'm saying this directly so you know what you're getting into. After all, the quest, like all the others, is wrapped in a good story. But the impetus for this one shouldn't be the story. Rather, it's about exploring the entire city. You end up wherever you can land and go off every corner. This way you can find places and visual highlights that I would have missed otherwise. Normally I hate this kind of quests, but in Cloudpunk I wanted to explore the whole game world and so the game gave me a sense to go here and there. You just have to feel like it. Otherwise you can remember, if you don't feel like exploring Nivellis completely, just ignore the quest of Evelyn. Its story is very interesting, but in the end it's just one of many. Because the story of Cloudpunk, Rainia and Nivellis speaks for this game as much as the game world. 
It's not a story in the classical sense. There is not the one goal you are working towards, not the clear good and bad powers you are working for or fighting against. The story is to get to know the city of Nivellis. This is also the background of Rainier, the protagonist. She comes from the country and was a musician there. So she has a little idea about Nivellis as we players do and you can put yourself in her shoes much better. It's Rainier's first working day or working night at the delivery company Cloudpunk. But this company is working illegally. We are going away from the city. The tasks are supposedly quite simple. Pick up the package, don't log in, deliver the package, nothing more. The customers value privacy, which has an ironic twist in the cyberpunk game. And we should respect that. Besides, you don't want any trouble. But the whole thing gets a bit more difficult when, for example, the package starts ticking. Have a look inside to make sure that there's nothing dangerous in there. And should you really deliver it and take part in things you don't want to have anything to do with? Or do you throw the thing on the garbage, where it can't harm anybody anymore? With this example, I spoiled the case for you, but the game is just exploring and flying things around, so the damage should be limited. There's a lot more to tell. Although, another little spoiler, the time span is only this one night. You only take part in Rainier's first working day. I hear noise. What noise, Camus? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. From the package. Even if the story is just to get to know the city, to give our actions and existence only a context, it is itself a good argument for Cloudpunk. But basically, it's about getting to know many different, very well written characters. That already starts with Rania. I liked her from the start, her answers and conversations always hit the mark or were comprehensible. Although a fictional character, she's very humanly written and therefore comes alive. Which would make her by far the most normal, with one exception. Every character in Nivellis is far from normal. Be it someone who wants his head planted on a robot or two gangsters. Androids building playgrounds. Yes, playgrounds. They argue that it's one of the most dangerous things to misuse building land from big companies for your own purposes. Did you try the okonomiyaki? Isn't that a pancake? Right! With fish flakes! Oh, it's to die for! I wouldn't trust the fish flakes here in Novalis. Would you like to appear on my food review channel? It's on all the nets. We're looking for people to react to different stimuli. Can you pretend to be sick on cam? What? No. There's a free meal in it for you. Or would you pretend to be really annoyed? Our viewers love that. I am annoyed. That's perfect. This is what I mean to get Naughty City through the story, which consists of countless encounters. Besides, building playgrounds is probably the best protest I have ever heard of. You meet many characters in different ways throughout the story. But such as the two child-loving gangsters androids, for example, you only meet by exploring the game world and talking to them. Through them, you learn more and more about the city from their personal stories, their appearance, their tasks and meaning of life, simply by their simple existence and life in it. And with every encounter, the picture of Nivellis expands, the pieces of the puzzle fit together and at some point, you get a more or less complete picture of the life of the city. And there would certainly be much more to tell. And actually, I would call this part the main strength of Cloudpunk. Because the conversations are always written so well and so entertaining. If you have to find characters weird, then they are weird. If you're supposed to hate them, you hate them. And if you're supposed to like them, then they are just very sympathetically written. Took you long enough. <coughs> are you the one that left the note? Who are you? The chump had an attitude and a smell to match. They didn't call him Smokin' Jojo because he was cute. His circuit boards were on the fry, literally. He was half burnt out, overheating and underperforming. You also meet many of them several times, like the engineer or someone who is looking for a friend. But there are always two recurring ones in this game. There is Control. In the beginning it was just a simple client, who is also only a part of Cloudpunk. But little by little you make friends with him and I think rarely a fictional character was more likable to me. On the other hand, there's our constant companion Camus. He is an automata, originally in dog form but now in the body of our car. The conversations between Rania and Camus may be inscribed in the list of 
excellent dialogues between the protagonist and his companion in video game history. Camus still behaves like you would imagine a talking dog, but his being and thinking as an AI did not come off badly. This is expressed in very many places. When Rania complains about too little nature in the valleys and Camus tries to cheer her up by detecting over 50 rats in the immediate vicinity. Yeah, it's alright I guess. A bit sparse. I'd love to be able to decorate, you know, make it less clinical. Do you remember the birds we had back home? Yes, they landed on the window ledge. I could never catch them. Yeah, not much chance of wildlife here. There are rats. I detect almost 50 within the property. Ugh, do me a favor, Camus. Never mention rats again. Okay. There are also a number of rare breeds of sump spider. Ugh, also not good. Come on, we should get back to work. The only thing in the game that suffers from this concept of storytelling is the end. The game also has a story outside of just getting to know different people. In Nivellis, of course, everything doesn't seem quite right. For example, entire quarters break off, crash into the sea and nobody seems to care. But this frame is kept rather pale. Which is everything but bad, but because of this kind of storytelling, the end comes a bit sudden. I would definitely take another look at Cloudpunk, simply because I love this game world and I want to know what influence my decisions had and what changes if I decide completely the opposite on the second run. I also need some footage of the game, so all you can see here is footage from my second run.